How's that? Is that working? Yeah, it looks like it's working. Sorry about that, guys. Hey, guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Ferris Mike Simulators. This is episode 53, which is still crazy. Still crazy that we've done 53 of these. Absolutely nuts. If you guys hadn't caught any of my um, testing marathon or my streaming marathon that I did this last weekend, uh, what I've been working on since uh, last Thursday is... So before that, we were wanting to do uh, some fuzzing tests so we could generate long random instruction streams, run them on the hardware and in the emulator, and then compare the uh, resulting register values, for example, or resulting memory values or whatever. So I still want to do that, but... As I was sort of building that framework and building the tests, um, a big bottleneck became the um, actually transferring things to the flash cartridges that I have. And it's not really that the flash cartridge is particularly slow. I mean, it is a bit slow, but it is what it is. Uh, it's also that it's it's very it's a very manual process, and I basically have to do one test at a time that way. Um, so it would be much better if we had some kind of serial protocol with which we could just send over some some. Uh, some ROM or some uh, sequence of code, have it run that and then grab the results uh, without shutting down the Virtual Boy or anything like that. So I uh, worked on getting the serial connection uh, that works pretty well, as you can see. So what I've got here on screen is on the terminal over here, this is it sending different packets. Uh, on the left here, uh, this is actually a camera stuck in the back of the Virtual Boy. And the thing about it is that... <laughs> uh, it's, it's kind of not necessarily the best thing to show, but it's good enough. Uh, and I can do things like, I'll reset this and show you what this normally looks like. Uh, so I turn it on, it just says link test, yo. And then as I start running, uh, it says R when it receives a packet and then it will uh, send S back when it sends a packet and then a period when a whole uh, packet exchange has been completed. So it works pretty well. Uh, you can also see it has these weird horizontal lines. That's actually that this unit is somewhat defective. Um, the ribbon cables that go to the eyepieces are coming off a bit. Uh, and I'm a bit afraid to dig in and fix that. But that's also why I use this unit to uh, build this kind of hardware with. Um, because it didn't really matter too much that I broke it. But this is good enough. So anyway, things are working pretty well. Uh, this protocol... Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna, I want to go over a little bit about how I made this really robust um, because during the weekend, like I streamed basically the entire process of making this minus uh, a couple code cleanups during the weekend. Um, so during the week, the last couple days, uh, all I did was clean up the code a bit, move things around, uh, and just got this to be a little more robust. The main things I did for that uh, were mostly just going through and... Um, let me switch views here. Uh, I basically went through uh, the different kinds of different parts of the protocol, for example, on the Teensy and also in the test ROM. And I made it so that all this, these things that do exchanges, for example, can like time out. Uh, basically what I do is I end up doing this. Um... Oh, thanks, Don 170. <laughs> or it came from, from ads. I don't know if that's uh if you did that on purpose or not. But anyway, thank you. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so I just made all these functions. Basically, it's possible for them to fail. And the reason why I did that is so that they wouldn't get stuck just sitting there, for example, waiting for handshakes. Uh, now they do, for example, they wait, they try the handshake 20 times, for example. Uh, it ends up working pretty well. Um, I mostly needed it in the Teensy and in the Virtual Boy test ROM. Uh, the reason is because uh, if any part of this connection goes down, for example, while I'm transferring, I should be able to turn off the Virtual Boy and turn it back on, and then the Teensy shouldn't be in some weird state where that causes problems. And as you can see, that's not the case now. So if, if things break, I can just restart it, and it's fine. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. I will totally bump up the font size. <clears throat> Uh, totally forgot about that. But anyway, that was basically all I did. It's just, just now I have these like max handshake tries uh, and these perform exchange. So I, I call that uh, in the protocol. I now, you always send a packet from the host and then receive a packet back from the virtual boy. Uh, so I call that an exchange. Um, so that was the main, main thing that I changed uh, was, was doing those. I also, as I was playing with this, I, I learned a bit more about the different kind of condition failures or different kinds of conditions um, that caused failures. Like if I turned things off or, you know, did different things. Um, 
so what I did, um, yeah, I did made that work, but I also played around with uh, ways that this could fail. Uh, one of them that I found in particular was that um, it seemed like sometimes after a certain number of packets, things would get stuck, especially as I adjusted the test ROM a bit. Um, so the timing uh, that I use for this is the same that I left with on Sunday, where I have basically an 11 second period on the clock uh, that transfers bits. Uh, but in between sending the, the initial packet and then receiving one back from the Virtual Boy, I added a little delay. Um, and that's to let the Virtual Boy have a little bit of time to process the, the message and send a response. It's not a lot of time. Um, and it's intentionally a very short period of time. Uh, but it's enough to, for example, print something to the screen or yeah, just something super basic. I want to design the higher level protocol so that that this is like what happens between sending and receiving the packet is just like some very little logic like, oh, this was the wrong packet that we expected. So let's send back an error or send back a, um, a checksum. So I did that. I, that was another thing I did is I adjusted the test ROM so that it does actually ca uh, compute a checksum. I called it crap sum because it's a really crappy checksum, but it totally works and it's really fast. Most of the checksum algorithms that I've seen will do some kind of like multiply by some primes and rotate and do some bit magic. And that's, that's actually way too slow for this. Um, uh, just because multiplication is very slow on the virtual boy. Uh, so what I do is I just shift, basically rotate the state left three bits and, and uh, exclusive or in the current byte. And that works well enough for a 32-bit checksum. Um, seems to be robust enough. So I'm happy with that. Again, here I do a lot of things like the transfer byte can also send back errors if it doesn't work. Um, there was one thing that I found that can totally fail though, and that's if the teensy is shut off while it's in the middle of transferring a byte. It seems like the transfer hardware on the virtual boy gets stuck in that state and you can't restart a new transfer after it's been in that state. Um, so anyway, that works. Skeleton, there's probably a lot of things I could do, <laughs> but this, this just works well enough. So I'm not going to change that. Um, the other things that I did, not much to be honest, uh, rename some things. Uh, I did also make this open source, by the way, let me pull up the repo. Um, And like, cause I want, I always wanted to make this open source, uh, but I didn't initially because I didn't know what I needed in that repo. Um, I realized the only thing that I'm relying on now is the, the V810 version of GCC and bin utils, which are fairly easy to get a hold of. Uh, so that's the repo. <clears throat> so I just opened that. I just deleted those from the repo and then uh, reinitialized Git and then opened it up. Um, so that's pretty rad. Uh, sorry, Matrix 404, but uh, hope you enjoy the YouTube. So the last thing that I did, and this is actually kind of important. Um, I didn't realize this until I think it was yesterday morning. I was thinking about it. And one of the things um, one of the things that I was doing wrong is if we look at the, the protocol, I actually uh, wrote this in the readme here. Uh, it has these different lines for the different uh, pins on the connector. Uh, and like, for example, the control line is one that we actually talked about, uh, where, um, either, um, either unit that's connected here, um, or in this case, the TNC or the virtual boy, uh, can actually pull this down, um, can pull the line low. So what it is, is you have two open collectors. Let me, uh, let me pull this up actually. I can, cause I can explain this fairly well with paint. <laughs> uh, cause I also did a bit more reading on some of this stuff and it's, yeah, like I said, ends up being fairly, fairly straightforward. Uh, how's, okay, that's good enough. So an open collector, you can imagine this as sort of being the output. Um, <clears throat> and what the output will do, this is the output and this is the wire and then this is the other output. Uh, so there's an input, which will go this way on each end. So like this part here is the, the cable. And then over here is VB1 and VB2. And the idea is that you don't want to just say this one starts driving power into this one. And then this one also starts driving power into this one. And the reason is because if you, if you say like, for example, this one, this one uh, drives five volts on the wire, but then this one says that the logic will actually go to ground, um, which is basically zero volts. You've actually caused a short because you'll cause this to go straight into ground. And that would be very bad and everything explodes. So you don't want to do that. There's probably other reasons here uh, too here, but this is, I'm just gonna explain it as I understand it enough and that'll be enough to understand what the issue is here. Uh, so instead of how they design this, 
is these things can only do one of be in one of two states. They can either pull the line down to ground or they can leave it floating, uh, which means like there's there may be voltage on it or not, but it's not up to this uh, these output units here. So what they do is they add a couple resistors here. I'll just add this like this, and then up here goes to the five volts. And they do that on both ends. You don't actually need this on both ends, by the way, but you you would have built it this way. Um, so what this what 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 this means is that if neither of these, or sorry, if both of these do not pull the pull the line to ground, uh, the pull up resistor will actually pull this up to to positive. And then if either one of these or both pull it down to ground, the resistor keeps this uh, ground to positive connection from being a short, and also it will allow more current to flow to ground rather than to the five volts. Um, and that will bring the line low. So you basically get a logical and of whether or not these are pulling the line low. Um, or whether or not they're leaving the line alone. It actually is for log that logical and. Uh, and this, what's nice about this is that then either one of these could pull the line low at any time and you're not going to damage any of the hardware. And because both of these are also connected to inputs, you can always read the state of the line as well. So that's basically all you need to know about Open Collector. Uh, and the control line works like this. Now, the other line that actually works like this that doesn't really show it in this diagram is the clock line. Uh, I just linked this diagram, by the way. I just linked to Planet VB's documentation. I also added a comment about what I'm about to explain. Um, but yeah, the clock line actually works the same way as it turns out. And I discovered this by thinking about it that because either Virtual Boy could be like a master or slave in one of these transfers, it should be the case that either one could pull this low and you would never want to just drive it with five volts if the other one you know, didn't expect that to happen. Uh, so it must be, or it probably is, that the clock would have the exact same attributes where they're both open collector outputs tied to an input uh, with some pull-ups. As it turns out, I, I re-implemented part of the protocol because initially we had we were interacting with the control line correctly, but the the clock line we were actually driving uh, to positive or, or five or or no voltage, uh, which is actually not correct. Um, we should have also just been having that either floating or yeah, do the open collector thing. Um, and so I implemented it yesterday as if that were the case. Um, just because I thought about it and it should be, and it totally works, so I'm guessing that's how this this actually works. It, it's the only thing that really makes sense here. Um, so I may have actually damaged the Virtual Boy with what I was doing before, but we got lucky and that didn't happen. And yeah, so now we're fine. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so that was the other thing that I changed is why I bring that up. So if you look at Transfer Byte, instead of actually driving the clock, all it does is um, sets port B to zero and then adjusts DDRB, uh, which switches... Um, this to either being an output of zero volts or an input uh, that's floating. So that's all that is. And that allows us to, other than that, this this byte, uh, per byte protocol is exactly the same, same timing, same everything. Uh, but that should be a lot safer against the hardware. So that was the other change I made. And with all of that, um, it's super robust now. Uh, as you can see, I've been sending this whole time and we're about almost 26,000 um, packet exchanges with no errors. So it's pretty cool. By the way, before I forget, hi to guys in the chat. <laughs> uh, Skeleton, Mr. Liquid, Metal Voids, Matrix 404. I know he left, but hi anyway. Uh, uh, Try later, Pyro ESP, 8 Little Bits, Daniel Collin, Danny Fritz, Tourist, Love Like Semtex, Ms. Visser, I am Cedric. Anyone that I missed, or two, how's it going? In Mad Moose, Chief Detector, Hakase Dev. Oh, that's funny, Drew. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Hakase, the, the, the protocol that we did um, is, is it's just a protocol uh, to facilitate uh, sending and receiving packets um, between the PC and the Virtual Boy. So that's the protocol that I'm talking about. Um, because this, the, the actual hardware supports um, a bi-directional transfer of a single byte. So both uh, both Virtual Boys, or in this case, uh, the PC and the Virtual Boy will send and receive a byte at the same time. And on top of that, we need to implement a multi-byte protocol um, so that we can send, like, send a packet and then receive a packet. And that's what I'm doing here now. Hey, Okama. 
<clears throat> and so now that now we have that, like that's where we're at now is that we have this this way of sending and receiving packets, um, which I call a, a packet exchange because the host will always send a packet and then always pull a packet back. And that's just what I've decided uh, because that keeps the protocol very simple and it should be easy enough uh, for us to build the higher level, more interesting protocols on top of that. Particularly, um, the main goal here is that I want to be able to use this for uh, ROM testing. So I want to be able to uh, have this virtual boy running on my desk and be able to send over several test ROMs and have it run several tests against real hardware uh, and then send all the results back without, yeah, in, in sort of a fully automated way that should be a lot faster as well. Yeah, the link port was in the original virtual boy. Um, they never released a cable for it, but the port is still there and it's still hooked up to hardware registers. So what I did was I just added, um, I can just show you on the camera. Um, I added a Teensy on the top of the Virtual Boy that hooks up to that. And then that's what we're talking about here. If you're, if you're more curious about that, I have, I streamed for 15 hours this, this weekend uh, where I built the whole thing. So, oh, geez. All right, I gotta be right back because I just spilled Coke on my desk. <laughs> One sec. <laughs> yeah how say dev uh if you want to check that out i did uh upload um all of the episodes from there to youtube and i also put them in a playlist in their own i think it's ferris mix emulators virtual boy serial something um i'm really glad you guys liked that by the way i had a lot of fun doing that um and i would like to do more streams like that as well in fact when i go back to the um n64 emulator I'm totally going to build a similar rig, I think, unless the flashcards already have it, in which case, yeah, well. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was really fun. Um, and now we have a really useful thing. I, you don't have to watch that before watching this one. Um, yeah, if, if you want to stick around for this stream, you, you won't miss out on anything and watch those later. That's fine, because like, for this stream, we really only need to understand that we can send and receive packets, which which is what we built, so... Don't really need to know any more details than that. Whoops. This is the problem with rearranging things on my desk. Is that now my arms that normally move in some very safe places. <laughs> Suddenly those places are not safe. I'm just going to keep wiping this down for a sec. <laughs> yeah, the teensy code is written in C. <laughs> exactly, China. <laughs> I've actually never spilled Coke on my, or spilled anything actually on my keyboard and my little mouse mat thing until today. And I've had this, this exact equipment for a good year and a half, so I'm actually pretty proud of that. <laughs> Wasn't that much. 
<laughs> Drink more of that so I don't spill it. <laughs> My pants are a little wet, but that's all right. I think we're okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll rinse it in the shower along with my tears. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Here, yeah, Rubik's Cube is fine. My phone's fine. We're good. <clears throat> yeah, the keyboard. <laughs> it's totally fine. Like, it barely got on the keyboard. Mostly on my mouse mat and on my lap. <laughs> uh... But yeah, I'm really happy you guys enjoyed that because um, that was a super fun thing for me to just do in the weekend. Um, it Honestly, it's taken a bit less work than I expected to get it working, um, which I'm also happy about, of course. Um, and I hope that it's going to be robust enough to start building the higher level protocol. It should be. Um, it should be okay. But... Uh, there may be a couple timing gotchas that we will have to run into, but we'll see. I think it'll be all right. So basically what I want to do uh, for this higher level protocol, um, I want to do a couple things. I want to be able to, right now, all I'm doing is I just send a random packet and then I send that. And then when I get it back, uh, from VB transfer packet. This should actually probably be VB packet exchange, but that's fine. Um, I'm actually going to change that. VB exchange packet. So we send a packet of random stuff, and then we're going to get back a packet that just contains the checksum. And then I'm checking that right now. So that's the current setup. What I want to do... <clears throat> yeah, cross cam is only the other receive packets. Exactly. <laughs> You guys in the crotch cam. Um, so, so, so currently it's just sending a, sending a bunch of bytes and then getting the checksum back just to check it. I still want to use that format, but what I want to do is, oh, Fred Meyer, thanks for the, thanks for the uh, subscription. Still not used to saying that. <laughs> hey, Dark Second. Uh, so yeah, so right now I can just send data. I want to implement a protocol that uses that data, and I, I want to do things like. Uh, set a region of memory. So I want to send a packet that represents um, an address and then a bunch of bytes that are going to be at that address. So I want to be able to, to set a contiguous region of memory to known values. I want to be able to read a contiguous region of memory. And the last thing I want to do is I want to uh, run test code. And what that, would, what that would mean is that it would load uh, the system registers from uh, a certain known place in memory uh, then it would jump to an address that we give it in the command. Um, and then it would execute that code and then it would return, save out all the system registers back into a known place in memory. Um, and then that's it. Because from there, with the reading and writing memory, we have a, a mechanism where we can not only set up the expected, the initial values for the registers, but we can also read the new values of the registers. Um, and then... Uh, the last thing we can do with that is also read and write regions of memory in case the test code needs to do that as well. So I think it'll actually work pretty darn well. Um, and there's going to be there's going to be a few details with how we use that and how we set up the tests that I'm not entirely sure about. Uh, but my goal today is is to do the uh, read contiguous part of memory, write contiguous part of memory, and then execute some code. And the code, for now, I'm just going to probably hard code some stuff in Assembler uh, and just stick it in there somewhere. So we're going to figure it out. <laughs> but I think I think this should all work out pretty well. Although it's already been a half hour and we haven't made any progress yet. But that's all right. I did want to go over those details. So yeah, this should be pretty rad. So... Uh, well, while implementing this stuff, this is the reason, by, by the way, why I needed all that redundancy stuff and like error checking is because I'm going to be turning off the Virtual Boy a lot while we're working on this. Um, so we need to implement some stuff here. We need to, uh, 
let's see. I think I'm going to write it uh, from this perspective first, uh, from the Rust perspective, and then kind of see what that's going to look like on the Virtual Boy. Um, I'm thinking what we can do here is... Well, actually, I can probably just hard code enough tests for this, uh, for this reading and writing random parts of memory that I think it would be okay. So... Yeah, I think this will work out. There is also going to be some timeout stuff that we're going to need here. Right now, uh, the Rust code just waits forever. Um, that's the only layer I didn't add like timeouts and stuff to um, because that, that's going to be the easiest one, I think. So I think, I think we're going to do something like this. Um, send mem region and so here we can take an address and then the data which is going to be a bunch of u8s And I think these are going to end up returning results, actually, as well, um, because I do want this to do things like timeout. Um, but maybe that actually won't be exposed to this level. Um, maybe that'll just be used underneath in implementing this. Not entirely sure. We'll work that out as we go. But I want to do that. Um, so we want to, let's actually call it set mem region. Uh, and then, or... We'll call it write mem region because I want to do write and read. Uh, we're going to do read mem region, and this is going to return uh, a bunch of u8s. And then we're going to have yeah, just execute code. <laughs> uh, and here we're not going to send the data here. And then here we can do entry. We'll call this VB call. Yeah, that'd be good enough. <laughs> yeah, so this this uh, this link cable can be used for uh, uh, Virtual Boy multiplayer, but none of the official games actually use it. I think there are some homebrew games that do though. <clears throat> um, but the setup that I did is not really built for that. It's basically built for just having the PC be sort of a master and can send things back and forth. Is that? I think that says Trix NZ. Thanks for the follow. Um, so I want to do these. I want to do write and I guess we can actually do a lot of these at the same time. I'll wait for call. Um, but for these, we'll start defining some of this stuff. Uh, I think this won't be too terribly difficult. We are going to need to do a couple things. Yeah, first of all, I am going to make this do a result. And this can be a VBR. I'm just kind of making a mess here in this in this uh, main file, and that's fine. We'll split this up into separate modules. Same with the code on the virtual boy. I want to do that as well, but not right now. Uh, so in this case, um, data empty can be one error. So we can do if data.len is zero. Actually, I think we even have this too, uh, is empty, which is better. And then, oops, need this, and also don't need these parents. And then here we can return okay when we know that this all works. Yeah. 
In this case, also, we're going to make this a result, but we'll get to what that means later. Cool. So, <clears throat> that's if the data is empty, and then we want to, we're going to do some handshaking when we do this. Um, we'll get to why in a sec, but first we need to send all of this data. So the way I want to do that, um, I actually think that I want to have like one kind of uh, packet that we can send, which is just going to be an address and data pair. Um, and then if the data is more than 256 bytes minus the four byte address, uh, then it'll just send it in multiple, multiple passes. I think this will work out quite nicely. Um, yeah. So here's what we want to do. We're going to loop here. Uh, let mute data offset is zero. And then here we can do Yeah, adder length data, yeah. So it should be. Well, we don't actually need the length because the length will be part of the packet length. So we should actually only need address and data because the address is a fixed uh, fixed size. The length is a non-zero number and we get that already while transferring the packet. So it'll be something like that. And then, yeah, the actual data. So how do I want to do this? I think we're going to do data.len minus data offset and let's do it like this. If next packet len is greater than uh, 256 minus 4, I should probably replace this magic number, but we'll get to that. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to bootstrap it the other way, Daniel Collins. So, so this package will will communicate with a virtual boy over serial and run the tests across that serial interface. And then, what I want to do is abstract the abstract the thing that we send and receive to and from, because in this case, uh, the port here represents an actual connection to a virtual boy, but that could just as well represent a connection to an emulated virtual boy in memory. So it's it's gonna go sort of the other way where this rather will consume the emulator core crate and then use that as one of the backends it sends to. So when we start setting up more of the higher level stuff uh, with like running multiple tests, um, then we can actually run them side by side, for example. And the, the reason like it may seem a bit inefficient to to go over the serial interface for the emulator virtual boy because we don't really need to do that. But I think it'll be overall less code to do it that way. Um, and it'll be a bit cleaner because then we can run exactly the same test ROM in both scenarios. So I think I think it'll work really well. And it'll be a really cool setup too. Like it's just gonna be, it's gonna be rad. <laughs> um, so we do that. If next packet len is zero, then we can break. Yeah, this, this should cover all those cases. And then, yeah, then we'll actually send the data. So this shouldn't be too hard. I think we'll do, what was I using to send integers before? Was I just not doing that? No, here it is. I did this. This will be the bytes. Because here we're going to do 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 the 
this way. Yeah, I will need some kind of command byte for sure. Uh, so that will actually be this as well. Uh, and then we're going to need that too. So definitely need that. Uh, cause then this works out and we should be able to do something like this. Let packet is, I think we can do a vector with the this as you ate. Uh, I think we can do into iter dot. Oh, I always forget. It's not concat, it's chain. Uh, adder bytes. And then we can chain um, data from data offset to data offset plus packet length. And then I can actually do this a little differently too, because we'll pull it out of here. And I think we'll do data bytes and then we can do dot collect into a vec. Although I don't think we need to. Not if this, uh, a transfer just takes a slice, so we actually don't need to collect this at all. So we can just do that. And then, yeah, VB exchange packet. And here we're gonna pass down the port and the packet. And it didn't like this because we need to do v, vb command. And Okay, maybe we actually do need to collect that. <clears throat> I'm also gonna do this. So that'll make it a little easier to read. And then here, that. Okay, what didn't it like? Okay, I didn't like that this was a slice. <clears throat> Let's do iter here, iter here, and then and the last thing that we did here is it, it gets a bunch of references because we need to do dot cloned and then that should work. All right. <laughs> um, not too bad. So that'll be our whole packet. And I think this will just work because we have the commands, we have the address and then we have the data. Our max packet length is 256. Yeah. Not too bad.
We're not going to send if the next packet is empty. Yeah, this should be good. So the response, we do want to do a little bit of checking here. Um, data empty invalid response would, would be a really good error to have. And in fact, we can even do include the response in that. Um, yeah, I really like writing this kind of code in Rust. Um, I think this kind of code is where Rust starts to really shine with this kind of error handling and, and just being able to express things in this nice, concise way. Anyway, um, here, I think what we want to do, let's, let's compute the, the crap sum. <laughs> Cause I think what we want to do is when we send this, uh, we're going to get an initial response, which I think is just going to be the checksum. And then, uh, Jaspi, the VB does not need to know when we're done sending because we're just going to always send as many as we need and then it will go and write the stuff. So I, I it shouldn't need to know that we're done. Um, cause we're going to have a separate command for actually like jumping to the code and running it. So the virtual boy gets to stay in the dark <laughs> with what our intentions are. Um, so we can do VB command. We can even do this in you know, VB response. Maybe that's better. Because we can do um, not sure what this will look like yet, but we'll figure that out. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, I think I just want this to be the crap sum. <laughs> let's do something like this. Let's do it this way. Here we can do put this up here too. You can make a new one or you can compute it. I'll actually put this at the top because I think this is the, sort of the nice way to do it. Oops. Like that. And then this actually becomes a bit easier. That's cool. I like how that's written. And that makes it uh, really easy to just do it here too. I should actually probably call this checksum here and then crapsum is the checksum that we use, <laughs> but this is fine. Oh, love how that gets, how pretty that gets. <clears throat> I'll have to look into the failure thing. For now we'll use uh, result just cause that's what I'm familiar with. But uh, yeah, maybe that would be better. Um. Yeah, so here I think we'll do let's do okay with crap sum. Maybe that makes sense. Let's 
So we'll stick down here because we don't. Or actually, we'll do this. Whoops. That makes it easy to make these. So, because here's what I'm thinking. Um, I should actually start specifying these in alphabetical order. Yeah, we need this on crap some, which is fine, because that'll just be the state. <coughs> Because what I want to do is I want to be able to parse a response. I'll make this a VB error too because that'll make it easier to marshal. Because then we can do something like this. Um, like that. And I, I want to do it here where we want to parse a response because maybe we want to, I don't know, maybe I'll make this part of the B exchange packet. I'm not sure. Um, in fact, I might even wrap this in like a send message or something where he would have created or send commands, issue command or something. And then we would have built a, a semantic command and then had that parse it. Maybe that's actually better. <laughs> that's funny, Alcoma. Because then, then, for example, write mem region. Um, has the, the address... All right, it's actually this, and then data. I think I like that better, actually. And then, we'll get to this. <laughs> Thanks for all the hosts, you guys, by the way. Really appreciate that. Because <clears throat> here... Yeah, if we can, we can collect these. Yeah, I actually like this. Because then we can do... VB send command or VB issue commands. And then here we get the port. The fact that we do all these traits here, by the way, is actually really nice. Um, because then we can pass anything that'll do read and write into this. So. So it'll just look like that. And then we'll get a result of either a VB response or some kind of VB error. Uh, however, VB response, yeah, because this doesn't need to, to, to do error. The error can have like, for example, invalid response, but then it's not correct that it had VB response. It's actually that we just got some data. So I think that's how that makes sense. That's actually pretty cool. <clears throat> I 
I like when the pieces start coming together. <laughs> so then we could do, for example, match command. And then we'll get uh, write mem region. <laughs> data and then we are q12 thanks for the follow We can do, for example, let packet is this. And then write memory gen can do. Yeah, actually, so issue command in this case. That's actually fine. We'll use this as the lower level stuff. So we're, we can assume, for example, We we can do a little bit bit more air checking here. I wouldn't mind doing that actually. <laughs> and I say little bits. <laughs> um. Yeah. If data dot is empty, then we can return with VB air data empty. If data dot len is greater than 256 minus five, again, probably want to get rid of these magic numbers later, but I don't really care right now. Uh, then we can do another kind of error. Data too large, why not? <clears throat> Uh, and then, otherwise, the address can be anything because it's a 32-bit address space. And we'll just use virtual memory because that'll be more uh, versatile. versatile. So then it becomes something like this. And actually, by the way, I did not want to get the crap sum over the entire packet. I actually only wanted that over the data. Um, so that'll be something. Uh, but then we have the address and the data bytes. This we don't need because we'll just get the address from the command. And the data... Bytes is just going to be the data itself. Sweet. So then we can just return this from this expression here. So then we get the packet. Uh, then we are going to do VB response parse uh, VB exchange packet. And then we can do the port and the packet itself. Uh, this is gonna be v, vb command. Uh, this needs to be error. Um, this also, no, this one needs to be error. This, by the way, can be the like the command index. We can just use zero for this. That's fine. And then here, parse should give us either a VB response or a VB error. So this should be okay. 
except that, I think. <laughs> Why well, didn't like that? Ah, oh, right. It's the result from this. It actually told me to do that. That's nice. <laughs> so this this I actually quite like because this is our issue command, and the different commands we'll have to implement here. Uh, but that's fine because that'll be, I think, fairly decent semantics. Uh, this doesn't. This then doesn't have to worry about this. This can just worry about the command. Uh, so we'll do let response is vb issue command. And we'll give it the port, and then we'll do the command. So vb command. In fact, we can even do this as a separate thing. Why not? Uh, let command is vb command uh, write mem region. Uh, yeah, write mem region is an okay name. And here we'll do the adder is adder and data is do data like this. And what I want to do here the extra copy here is fine. And then that'll be data here. This will be a command. Sick. Actually, I can inline this. This is fine. Wasn't that much. Um, and we don't need adder bytes here. And what we can do is actually, let's only do that here. We'll do, so we know response is a valid response at this point. Otherwise this here would have, would have quit. Um, so at that point we can take the response, which this is the only valid one, uh, match response with VB response. Okay. With crapsum, uh, and then we'll get the, the crapsum <laughs> and here. This can become let expected crap sum. Uh, we don't even need to compute it unless we do this, which is really rad how this is fitting together. We might get some issues here with ownership. We'll see. Worst case, I'll clone this again and it's fine. <laughs> or, or I could just uh, compute it here. That's actually quite all right. And then here, um, we expect this. And then if crapsum is not the expected one, then we can also get another error. Uh, wrong crapsum. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <clears throat> so I think, I think that'll work pretty well. Um, And you know, we can, oh, I just realized we can totally test this in isolation without having to read the regions. And the way we can do it is by writing to screen memory, <laughs> which is going to be an awesome way to test this actually. 
That's going to be cool. <laughs> we'll make some glitch art on the Virtual Boy screen. <laughs> that makes me excited. Um, the other thing is that this will write, I want to keep this as a distinct command from, for example, write register, um, because the registers you want to read and write as, um, like sometimes 16 or 32 bit values all at once. You don't want to read like multiple values because the way it, re the way the virtual boy reads bytes, as far as I understand is it does end up reading the entire, um, I think it's a 16 bit bus. So I think it reads entire 16 bit values. Maybe it's 32 bit. I can't remember. Um, I think it reads the entire value like in an atomic read. And so if you want to read multiple bytes, this will be several reads on the same address. <laughs> exactly, Daniel Cullen. <laughs> Combo stream. Um, but it, I mean, it really just makes me happy because we'll be able to test that in isolation, which is always good. <clears throat> so also, wow, it's already uh, 9.15. That's okay. Um, Worst case, I'll... Well, I can't stream this weekend because I'm doing Ludum Dare. So I'll, I'll try to go a little later today, probably, if this drags on a bit. But otherwise, we'll hit it next week and do that stuff. But I think this is going well. The palette is not really that flexible. Uh, so I'd rather write to the screen than write to palette memory. If we had more palette colors, then I would definitely be more into that idea. Uh, because then we could see like if we overwrote stuff or whatever, but... In this case, I'd rather write to the screen. <laughs> yeah, so I'm doing Ludum Dare. I'm not doing it by myself. Um, I'm doing it with um, some friends from work. Uh, I did think maybe we want to stream it. Pushy Peck 84 thanks for the follow. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe we will. Um, I hadn't planned on it, but other than the, the fact that I'll probably be on my laptop at, at the office. We'll see. No promises, but maybe. I think that's a good idea. Um, so yeah, so I think I think this is good. I think this is all we need. Except I think we're getting some errors here because parse isn't there yet. Um, and we only really have this one that we can parse right now, so we can do this. Oh, I'll, also, I actually want to take ownership of this here. Oh, cool, Don170. Yeah, I'm probably actually going to be doing mostly audio work on the, the thing that we're doing. Some some work on the engine that we're going to build, which is probably going to be built on FMOD. Because we, we, have, we have some really cool ideas, uh, and audio is going to play a big part of that. So I'll be doing a lot of track mixing and some cool stuff, I hope, along with some music that hopefully just adapting stuff I have laying around on my hard drive. We'll see. Should be a cool weekend. A couple cool weekends in a row. <laughs> so if... If the data is empty, then we're going to return error with a invalid response. And we can just pass the data. We can just take ownership of that. B, VB error. And I think we'll hit some fall through cases here. <clears throat> Like that. Yeah, did not mean the semicolon. Yeah, I think I remember you talking about that, Mad Moose. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> I actually have never made a mod player. I would like to at some point. I did an Atari VCS music driver once. That's kind of the lowest level music thing I did. Also, why didn't it like this? Oh yeah, because now we actually take ownership of the those bytes. 
Now we're getting a bunch of unused warnings, but nothing else, which is great. It means the code is actually correct. Oh, I'm liking how this code is looking, you guys. Even though it's taking me a little longer than I hope to write, but this is totally fine. I think we're going at a good pace. Um, I think my initial estimate was wrong, not the pace that we're going at. So for parsing it, uh, we really just need to match data zero. And here, if we don't know the value, we'll just get an error. So if it's zero, then we have a couple other things to say. So if if data dot length is not five, because we're going to expect a four byte crop sum from this, uh, then we're going to do the same thing here. Yeah, I did. So I actually had the same experience uh, where you get more music as you implement features. I got that experience when doing the Virtual Boy, or no, sorry, the Super Nintendo Audio Unit emulator it was the same way. Like the first time I just had these like really crazy noises. I was just so happy. And it just, it sounds like crap because first, like I don't, I didn't do any pitching or anything. So it was just all the sounds at once. Like slowly progressing through that kind of thing. And it was, oh, that was so much fun. That's something I would actually like to re-implement at some point. Um, I know I ported it all to Rust, but I would kind of like to do it in a more Rust-friendly way. And there's some implementation details that I would like to revisit. So maybe I'll do that at some point. But, but I'm not going to stream that for a long time. The next emulator stuff I'm going to stream after the Virtual Boy is definitely going to be the N64 thing. Um... Yeah, so we know our length is correct, and then we should be able to read in the bytes. I'm just going to do something like this. Um, zero, and we can just do this. And then here we want to do let's call it state actually. Yeah, and it's going to be okay with this as well. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> This makes me happy. I'm satisfied with this. I'm gonna make these hex values because I know that when we have a lot of these, um, then I would rather see them as individual digits like this aligned, so. But I'm, I'm really liking how this code is looking, you guys. That makes me very happy. So this is what we wanna call now. Let's do this. Let's um, let's take a string that we want. Uh, Rust has CPAL, which is pretty nice. Rodeo is okay, um, but it has some bugs. And the API seems to change. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but it was changing a lot when I was looking into it. I haven't actually really used it, though. The uh, Rust Boy just uses CPAL, which is really low level, but it totally works. Um, actually, one of the first uh, open source projects I contributed to in Rust was uh, Core Audio RS um, in order to get that ready for CPAL and some other things. But that is not relevant. Let's do this. So this is all the Echo stuff that I did. Now this stuff gets even simpler. I do want to sleep here. We'll get to Y in a sec. Oh, also, this may not be all I want to do here.
I actually want to after we send it, I want to I want to do another um issue another command just to get the status, I think. Or actually it doesn't really matter, does it? Cuz this will just execute once it gets the command, then it'll just go and do it. Um we don't necessarily need to know when that's done. For reading it, we will. So maybe this is actually okay. Because reading it, I want to issue a read command. And then it won't have enough time to populate the buffers before we finish the packet exchange. So I want to do an issue, a read command, and then another one to get the data for the read command. Um, which is just allow the virtual boy essentially arbitrary, uh, an arbitrary length of time to respond to that. Uh, so here, let's do this. Uh, the data, I think you do that for bytes. And here we can do, let's do a space so we can read this. Something like that. And I want to have spaces on the end just so we can know where it starts and ends. Actually, the asterisks will do fine for that. Yeah, I think this will be cool. And then, I do want this actually. So, actually, we'll do this. We'll let row is something. We'll do a U32 uh, and then we'll modulo. It's a 64 by 48 or something. I can't remember. I have it here in these constants. 28 by 48. So for the row, we'll do by 28. Uh, let call is RNG gen U32. And what was it again? Uh, 28. No, 48. There we go. Adder is going to be row times, I believe it's by 64 bytes actually. Or is it? It's actually 64 U16s here. So row by 64 plus call times 2. Uh, we'll do this let message because we're going to need to expand this actually. Um, <clears throat> data can be message dot iter dot map. Uh, we're going to take that character. I think we can just, yeah, we'll get the character. Uh, as u16 i think that's all we do and then we can write mem region with the adder and the data and the port which i think is in mute port from this perspective Um, do that, and it's the sleep and duration need to come in from here. Right. Let's do this. Uh, what was it? Uh, flat map. Because I think we can do. Vec x and zero dot into iter. Bam. And here we can unwrap this. <laughs> ah, VB error needs to implement debug. That's not a problem at all. Sick. Uh, data offset does not need to be mutable. That's true. Um, it should be though. Oh, I love how I caught that. That's so nice. 
uh, because this should totally increment data offset. This would have actually broken if we sent a long enough message, which I don't think we're doing yet. Uh, we need the ability to, so we will probably write a long message to fix that. Um, but here, uh, yeah, and then let's do it here. Data offset plus equals packet len. And that should work. This is fine. Sweet. Cool. Um, so if I turn this on, this will not work, by the way. Oh, also, my cartridge is not in the Virtual Boy. I'm going to run this. Uh, it's not going to do anything, which is what we expect. Actually, I also want to do this. Let's actually still bring back this packet index. Okay. I think that's nice. So then we need to do all of this on the other side. Of course, if I just run this, we should get it sending. Oh yeah, probably can't connect. No, it should be able to connect. Don't actually know why it's not printing this at least. Oh, it's probably not flushing. That would make sense. Right, and that's why I had a CD out. We should do that. Because we want it we want to see it if it's getting stuck there. Yeah, so that's what it should look like. And Yeah, the precise was the measuring time. We'll not worry about that for now. But I will comment this out. Um, before I implement the other side of this, I'm also going to comment this out just to get it out of the way. Uh, I'll be right back. And I'm back. Yeah, we shouldn't get any more warnings now. I think. Actually, I don't want to clean because I don't want to download all the other dependencies. But yeah. Um, so let's implement this on the other side. For now, uh, we basically just need to... Ooh, this might actually be an issue. We might actually have wanted to to do all of the data here. B. 
because as far as I know, the checksum stuff will get a checksum of the entire packet. Um, yeah, maybe we do want that. Let's do this then. We'll, we'll do it this way where we can get a VB response and we can get the, we'll get the crap sum here. So then we can do this. That response expected crap sum here. And then here we can do packet here. Uh, we can compute it on the packet and then we can be response parse uh, dot map. Take the response and then we'll do the response and the packet crap sum. I think that's the nicest way to do that. And everything seems to be okay. Great. Oh, this is pretty, you guys. Uh, so now we gotta do the other side, which I don't think will be as pretty. I'm just gonna pull this uh, Rust code off screen, by the way, just cause it's gonna be easier for me to, to, to compare them than switching back and forth. So, uh, that's the Teensy code which we shouldn't have to change. So right now there's just this wait loop here. And for now, I think for the sake of time, or maybe it doesn't help, I'm not actually sure. You know, I actually do. I'm going to add this here. Let me explain why and what I'm going to add. Uh, here, we do actually want to do to do I want to so we're, we want to send a byte and then the response uh, is basically just going to be okay, I got it. And then we want to send an uh, uh, some kind of status command and then make sure it's okay. Uh, because then this will give the virtual boy time between packet exchanges to actually look at what we sent and make sure it's okay. And then do the work. Um, and then it'll send back that it's okay. F just for getting this working, we won't need to actually do that. Um, so I'm not terribly concerned with that. We may actually need to do the retries. We'll get to that. Um, for now though, let me move the teensy out of the way. For now. We'll do some some stuff. Yeah, we'll receive the packet, we'll send response. And so I think I want to do something like this. Um, let's do this. I have, I have in for the lengths. I can't remember what I used here. U30, I did int, yeah. Um, yeah, this shouldn't be too bad. 
Uh, I do know that uh, like U32 reads and writes, actually the, the address actually gets clamped to the nearest uh, like aligned 32-bit value. So we're going to have to do some of that manually, but that, that'll be okay. So here, by the way, I also wanted to do one more thing. Um, instead of calling this VB write mem region, I actually want to call this fuzzy write mem region. Um, the reason I want to do that is I want to sort of separate the layers a little more here so that the VB stuff is sort of the underlying like packet transfer mechanism. And then the fuzzy protocol is what I'm going to call this. Um, which is sort of the, yeah, the, the sort of command framework. We have fuzzy command, fuzzy response, and we'll do fuzzy error. Which I think is correct here. See how low this goes. Yeah, this is correct. And this will be fuzzy issue command as well. Yeah, because I want fuzzy to be sort of the name of this framework. Maybe some of the tools, we'll see. But then this looks nice. So we can separate that here too. So we can do our command codes here. So for example, fuzzy response, okay with crap some, that'll be zero. Um, so for now, we'll just send those back. We can do Response buffer. We'll do it this way, actually. And then we'll send. Like that. And then we can do. I think I had up here we have the receive packet crap sum, so we can just get a hold of that. This would be this shift right uh, I shift left three. And again, we have to do this copy here, um, byte by byte, because we can't do a, an unaligned U32, right? But I do want the packet to be um, tightly packed. So, yeah. <clears throat> also, for debugging purposes, we still want to do print str r. So the reason I'm doing R and S is so we can see like a packet was received and then a packet was sent. This just makes it way easier to debug. And then I put a period at the end of this to uh, make it easier to read uh, as it goes through the data. Um, Cause it ends up filling up the screen. So it's easier to see if something went wrong if you don't get the period, for example. Um, I think that makes some sense. <clears throat> However, we do need to actually do the commands. Um, and so, so this is what I want to do. I want to do the command here, and then this is going to take sort of an arbitrary amount of time, which is why I don't want to, I don't want the system waiting for the response. So I'm going to have it pull until it gets the response, uh, where like the packet exchange should be basically instant. Um, so we're going to issue the command and then we're going to send, um, yeah, send an okay or whatever based on whether or not we could parse this. And if we can't parse it, then what we send is going to be some kind of error packet um, or error response. So I think that makes a lot of sense. 
<laughs> Sunjammer, thanks for the follow. Um, yeah. For now, I'm just going to hard code this. And we can do better parsing in a sec. Because I'm not sure how the code's going to be structured here. It's not going to be as nice in C as it was in Rust. But we do expect zero at the beginning. Uh, so we'll just pull the address and then we'll start doing the data. So it'll be something like this. Um, do U32 right adder. Actually, I'll do another scope here. To right adder. Could do equals zero even. Or actually, we'll do this and I'll do. And this should be. Receive packet buffer. Let's do right adder. This thing again. Yeah. And then right adder or equals I plus one. Nice. Or we're going to get these little Indian. So this is actually backwards, and we need to do that. And then we can do uh, right length is going to be the, we actually need to do a couple things here. Now this is correct, but we're going to get the receive packet length uh, minus I think it's just minus the command and the address. And so then let's do this. No, I'm doing I++. You can suffer, Mad Moose. <laughs> I will totally mess everything up now that you're watching Sunjammer. I think this will work. Oh, except it didn't like that I tried to shift a pointer value. So we'll do this. We'll do a... Uh, U8 pointer, right pointer, but then we'll also do a U32 right adder. Something like that. And then, so we'll do right adder here, and then we can do uh, right pointer is right adder. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that built, and let's just try it. I actually do suspect that we'll only be able to send one message 
and then the other ones are going to time out. Um, that's honestly what I predict here. Which is also why I want to pull the status after we issue the command. You definitely are on an island of one in that matter, Mad Moose. Oh, something went wrong. Keep getting notifications from Twitch. Oh, that's a friend request. I don't really know what the friends on Twitch do, so if I don't if I don't accept your friend request, just it's because I have no idea why I would. <laughs> don't take it personally. To generally people out there. Let me finish my cube here and then. Switch views. Uh. Okay, so this is interesting uh, because we got the wrong crap sum, but according to the Virtual Boy, it it did receive that. Oh, you know what? We're writing into direct pixel memory, I bet. Which is probably being overwritten by the hardware uh, because we didn't offset our addresses by screen memory. So I'm gonna actually fix that first uh, just because I really wanna see this working. <laughs> Uh, so our screen memory is bgseg0, which we should have set up in our, uh, stuff thing here, or bgmap0, I guess, uh, bgmbase, so it's this address. So if we go in here, in our Rust code, yeah, it's here, uh, actually it's all the way up here. The adder is this, so we want this. Because we need to put it at the base of the character memory. Um, okay, let's try that. Guys! Oh! How sick is that, you guys? <laughs> uh, not sure what you mean by blinking, Chief Detector. That is so sick to see this working. <laughs> so that means we can read and write uh, regions of memory or we can we can we can write them we we cannot read them yet and there's a couple things wrong here too uh, for example we did get the wrong uh, response for we got the wrong crap some response um, so I want to fix that I'm not entirely sure why it's wrong that could be in either one of these I'm going to check the virtual boy code first because if we have to reflash that it's going to be kind of annoying um, I'll make it run flash. <laughs> I did actually consider initially when testing to do, uh, whenever I, uh, make a serial terminal. So whenever I hit a key press, it would, it would send the, the byte back and add it to the screen. But yeah. Yeah. The, the blue light, that's actually the camera. It's a light on the camera. I need to cover that up with like tape or something. And it's being reflected by the, the mirror in the virtual boy. That is that the displays are made of. So that's that's what the blue thing is. So 
Ignore the uh, the blue stripe behind the curtain. <laughs> That's so cool to see this working, you guys. <laughs> oh, I'm giggling now. <clears throat> That's just... Oh, just going to sit in that for a minute. Ah, it's this. This is what's wrong with the crap sum. Uh, no, that's actually fine because this will this will mask off the other bits when it assigns to here. So this is actually okay. Um, so what happened here? Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, there you go. This camera works actually pretty well for monitoring the, the Virtual Boy, even though it's it's kind of not mounted that well. Um, and it's also the more expensive camera that I bought for my face, but it was it was the only one that would actually work. Uh, the the crappier camera that I use um, just cannot see the Virtual Boy stuff for for crap. But this this camera actually works really well. Um, ah, I got you. That looks like Thanks guys for yelling at me, by the way, about the wrong view. I definitely would have missed that. That might be it. Dark, dark second. I don't think it was. Cause I, I thought I fixed that. Cause here, here I'm doing it on the whole packet. Which is what we expect. Let's just assume. Thanks for the follow. Because um, <clears throat> this this should compute the checksum on the entire packet data and return that. And that should be what we're using as the expected one. Um, on the test ROM, This is also correct that it should be using the one that received because this will this will compute the checksum as it's receiving, which is why I want to do the whole packet. Um, maybe it's the way that I'm reading the data because I think I might be reading it backwards uh, when I'm parsing the the message or parsing the response. Where did that go? Here, because here I shift left eight. Yeah, I'm I'm doing this wrong. Uh, this should be shift right eight, and then this will be this shift left 24. Exactly the mirror of what I did wrong previously. So yeah, it was definitely Indian tourist. That is what I wanted to see. Boom! I actually suspect that this would time out on longer packets, though. But that is exactly what I expected to see. I'm gonna make a small change here to add some spaces on the end of the message. It's also, as you can see, uh, like midway down the screen, uh, my mouse cursor's all over the place, but. <laughs> um, where, there's my mouse. You can see it's still writing the RS stuff down here for when it's resending and or receiving and sending packets. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I could totally do a matrix effect over this. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, you know why this is probably working? It's probably because I'm sleeping. If, if I don't do this, I would expect this to fail. No, that's working. <laughs> what? I'm surprised that doesn't time out. But that's cool. Thank you, Drew, too. I really appreciate it. Honestly, I'm surprised at how <laughs> at how well it's gone. <laughs> but I'm very happy with that. Um, I think I think the I was talking about this with a guy from work too, that this came together really quickly. And I think I think the the main thing that I've done right here, um, 
is that I've tried to keep everything so, as simple as possible um, and just strive for simplicity the entire way down the stack. I think that's, I think that's the one thing I can really take credit for here. Although this has been pretty, pretty rad, <laughs> but I think, I think that's sort of the main, main reason why I was able to do this quickly and general understanding of a lot of things, I guess. <laughs> Oh, this is really cool. It's it's already ten. Um, <laughs> thanks, Drew. Um, it's already ten, so I don't know how long I'll go. I might might cut off the stream now. <laughs> I'm, I don't want to set up a little terminal because. Because the goal here is eventually to run code, so just gonna keep working towards that goal. But I, I think I'll do this. I think I will. Um... <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll do, we'll do a GDQ, or we'll do we'll do a uh, we'll do a Twitch plays Virtual Boy. <laughs> but I think I think I'll cut off the stream now, and then what we'll do next week. Um, is we will work on uh, perhaps doing the response packet to this. Maybe I'll drop that until we need it, but I, I kind of expect that we're going to need that. And then we'll do memory reads. And I expect that to go a bit faster because we already have this working. So a lot of this sort of boilerplate code is already there. So if we can get memory reads, uh, then we can work on sending over a test ROM and incorporating the register load and store stuff that I did um, previously all this stuff uh into this I, okay you guys can't see that again there oh there <laughs> then we'll incorporate all this stuff into there too so we'll be able to read and write register values and um yeah that'll be rad because i would i would go later but i really need to get some sleep tonight i haven't been sleeping that well but yeah, I'm super happy with this. I think we made really good progress today. And we'll be continuing on more of this uh, next week. So thank you guys for hanging out. Um, also, again, a reminder, uh, this is open source. Um, let me just pull up the repo here. Just calling it fuzzy. This was open source if you guys wanted to check out the code. Uh, also, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit this really quick. there so that's available uh this weekend i'm doing ludum dare maybe i'll stream some of that we'll see no promises but i'll consider it for sure and again thanks guys for hanging out and i will see you next time oh by the way i'm still doing my sunday demo scene stream in the evening so yeah so i'll see you on sunday but yeah see you guys